Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, so once again it is time for part 4 of the Takashi 69 Dragon Ball T series, okay? But before we get started on that, I want to go ahead and say something because it seemed like a lot of Mexican people were really in their feelings because of my part 3. Let me explain something to y'all like I said on um, Instagram because my Instagram page is private right now because I'm tired of people and their damn tattooed tears, okay? I'm going to read to you guys what I posted on Instagram and shout out and thank you to all my real Mexican subscribers who have common sense, who have discernment, who know that I'm not racist and who understood where I was coming from. To the rest of y'all who want to be in y'all's feelings and coin me a racist and all this other shit, you can kiss my damn ass and you can staff my damn videos, okay? How about that? I don't drag nobody to my shit. You're not gonna, you know, shame me from speaking my truth. So anyways, this is what I posted on Instagram. So let me go ahead and read this, okay? Let me, let me go ahead and say this loud for the bitches in the back who didn't get it the first damn time, okay? Check this out. I had took two screenshots because I was getting all types of nasty messages, DMs, and stuff like that. So, and you can go to the part three video and see all the disgusting comments. But I wrote this. I said, I love how many folks are in their feelings. Y'all love to sip on black tea slash drama. But as soon as I speak the truth concerning members of your own racist community, you all start crying tattooed tears, calling me a racist. I said what the fuck I said. Don't like it, unsubscribe, and unfollow my shit. It's that damn simple. Thank you to my real Mexican subscribers who clearly understood where I was coming from. The reason why most Mexicans along with a lot of the Mexican gangs did not claim Takashi 69 is because they knew he was a clown and a disgrace to their culture. That was the point of my statement. When someone of a different race isn't being respected or claimed by their own culture, black folks need to see that and take heed. He couldn't hire any Mexican security detail because they were not willing to risk their lives for an internet troll slash clown. Meanwhile, these black men went to bat trying to protect him only to lose out in the end. To all you overly emotional mofos, have fun cussing me out, calling me racist all over my part three video. I have approved all y'all's disgusting comments because I don't give a fuck, okay? I stand by my shit 10 toes down. Have a nice day. All right, you guys just heard me say that, okay? I wanted to read it. Why? Because today I got time, cuz that's why. Today I got time, cuz. Today I got time, cuz. All right, yes, today I got time cuz I, I, you know, anytime I can insert that meme, bitch, I'm inserted, okay? So, you know, to, to y'all who are in y'all's feelings, y'all kick rocks. I if you want to call me a racist for stating the obvious about Takashi 69 and how he was using these black men, not saying that these black men were innocent, not saying they were babies. He was definitely eating and using black culture and he has a bunch of black guys pinched, okay? Right now they're fighting for their freedom. Meanwhile, his peoples are good. So if you can't see the bullshit for what it is, I don't know what else to tell you. This ain't the channel for you, but I'm not going to sugarcoat anything that comes out my mouth, nor am I going to say things that make you feel good. Sometimes I say things that make people uncomfortable and I understand that but bitch it is what it is grab your teacup okay get out your damn feelings and sip slow let's go ahead and enjoy this part four breakdown okay <laughs> cheers to you bitch any damn ways y'all it's been crazy so in part four of this Takashi you know what I'm saying Dragon Ball T episode the audio has leaked between Mel Murder and Jim Jones. And for y'all who don't know who Mel Murder is, he, he's literally the godfather of Nine Trey, okay? He's one of the highest ranking members in the Nine Trey Bloods. And uh, him, Shadi, a lot of them, they all got pinched last year around the same time as Takashi 69. He has since pled guilty to armed robbery and everything else. But he was also rapping back in the day under the name Murder Matrix, I believe. I might be wrong. But um, him and Jim Jones are really cool. They're really good, you know, friends. They've been on each other for years, okay? And um, Jim Jones is a part of Nine Trey Bloods. He's always claimed blood. We've seen this growing up with Dipset. We knew all the Dipset was basically bloods, okay? So basically, in this recorded conversation, Jim Jones is pissed off. Jim Jones is tired of the fuckery. This was after Takashi 69 went on to the Breakfast Club and he basically denounced Trey Way. He denounced Nine Trey and he wanted to kind of fall back. I never had a manager. People used to think that the, all the guys were around Trey Way. were extorting Trey. And, and, and taking money from you. People <clears throat> thought that. 
I feel like that's what they thought, but it was never that way. It was just like put us in positions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. Instead of me hiring a, a uh, instead of me hiring a, a professional actual security agency, True. you you hired your peoples. I'm like, yo, let's put y'all in position. Let's get mm-hmm. y'all to her. Let's stop. Putting y'all here and put y'all here. Let's better y'all lives. Mm-hmm. And it all came down on me. Because it, it was just like, money. yo, when you try to help somebody, there's so much you can help before they just bite your hand. But now how do you move? Because they know everything about you. They yeah, you just said the, people that, you said the people that they, can get to you are the people that were next to you. So nobody next to me. So you, but you got rid of all of them, but they know how to get to you. Though. Yeah, like my mom don't even got my phone number. Damn. But well, I don't know if that helped. help. You mean? So you and Treyway not even cool? Mm-hmm. Um, I I just don't want to be bothered. I want to be left alone. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm done. So basically in this audio, Jim Jones is talking to Mel Murder. To me, he comes off like a shot caller. Like he's definitely as high ranking as Mel Murder. And he's saying that they need to super violate Takashi 6 9 so I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the audio. I got the full audio. I want you guys to go ahead and track this conversation between him and Mel Murder, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. He definitely, he definitely, he definitely can never get inside right now, bro. Oh, he got the picture up here next to the post. Man. Like, when you, when, you, when you go to YouTube and World Star, you got his picture next to this shit. Hey, everything he say, you got his, his, his picture screen with shiny picture next to this shit. I said, this shit crazy, son. <laughs> but he's doing that, he's doing that to make K-9 think he don't got no relationship with Boy Boy. That's what he's trying to do. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to literally, he's trying to separate himself. show. That's cool, but now you got to get violated. Yeah, super violated. Super. Super duper. So, ain't too much he can really do unless he going to run around with a hundred armed securities all day. You know what I'm saying? He going to get shot at him. He ain't getting enough money for that. That's a fact. That's a fact. And he just canceled all his shows. He ain't in a gang number no more. Nah, he ain't nothing. That's, that's, what, Nick, that's, that's what Shotty needs to make sure he do. Nah, we tell that nigga that he's not a gang member no more. He, he kicked out the whip. He was never a gang member. Then Shotty needs to expose him. Like, nah, it's possible. He never do. He got, he got a TMZ. TMZ want to choke him in this on Monday. So Shotty like, you want me? Um, Krippy, um, I think he said, nah, you don't need to be on no TMZ, but should I be on TMZ? I'm not going to get on it, but he wanted me to talk to him and tell him what happened, like, because you know, nah. my, 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 my lap first, you feel me? So he was nah, you don't say nothing, you let Shotty handle that shit, bro. You don't say nothing. So don't say nothing? Nah, Shotty got to handle that shit. He get on TMZ, he need to talk his talk, and he talk his shit. You did, mm-hmm. and he need to be very, very, very articulate about what he's saying, why he took, why he made people think that nigga was a gang member. He needs to let niggas know that he was never a gang member. He was always a money, a money ploy for the gang members. Mm-hmm. He got to figure it out, but they gonna have to violate Shorty because Shorty on some bullshit. Mm-hmm. Shorty think he gonna be going to the strip clubs and all that type of shit. Like Shorty better get on his A game. <laughs> uh, so I, I already knew, you know, so you know that nigga's a demon, homie. You know that nigga live for shit like this, homie. He gonna treat, he gonna treat that nigga like how he was blowing Chinese shit up. He gonna be around with that nigga shit up. He don't got nothing to lose no more. This is all you have. <laughs> he better get the violating. He better stalk shorty every move. <laughs> One of them security better get hit. Something, something better happen. Uh, nigga better stop mobbing, nigga. He better start doing some. Once he start tearing the security down, ain't no security going want, to going want that job. He's going to have to stay in the house pretty soon. That's it. That's what happens. Once once security get injured, them niggas like, nah, he's too much of a liability. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not going to I'm not going to protect nobody that know that is causing harm to us. <laughs> and that's all these niggas gotta say. Well, shawty, let niggas know, man, bro. We gonna tear the security up, bro. We not even worry about you, bro. You the you, you ain't even say you ain't even. We gonna tear the security up. 
this nigga start doing that, the security gonna be like, listen, bro, I ain't in this for this, bro. You gonna have to, you gonna have to do this shit on your own time, bro. You can't. They, the, the security out of New York can't run around with fire on them, right? Nah, them niggas, or, or unless they, unless they ex police, but it don't matter at that time because they doing a legal job. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It don't matter because the shot ain't run down on them. They can't pull their gun out to shoot nobody unless the gun is pulled out. Okay. Honey. All right, you guys just heard that disturbing audio. You know, this whole situation is real. This shit is playing out like a damn episode of damn power, okay? I'm like, this is insane. Jim Jones is a shot caller in this, you know, well-known gang. Like, who would have thought, okay? I mean, the whole situation is insane. But again, it goes back to what I was saying. 6ix9ine was using this gang just like the gang was using 6ix9ine. And these are all grown men who are, you know, older than 6ix9ine. Okay, um, Mr. Uh, Mel Murder is like 38 years old. Shoddy's 38 years old. These are grown ass men. Okay, they're closer to 40 than they are 20. And they're literally in pictures with 6ix9ine. There's a picture of Shoddy, Jonathan, who is, you know, Kim Kardashian's gay best friend, and 6ix9ine. It's like, you can't make this shit up. Okay, these guys were so enamored with the fame and going viral that nobody stopped to think, who is this kid? Where did he come from? Who co-signed him? No other blood sets were even trying to deal with this kid. But the, the Treyway crew was trying to deal with him and ride his coattails. And now all of these same guys are looking at double digits, okay? So for y'all who don't know... When the police got a hold of that audio because they had been following all these guys wiretapping their phones. First of all, okay, let me just go ahead and say this. I watched enough mafia movies, okay, bitch, to know that you really shouldn't be having conversations about violating people over the phone. I'm just saying, damn it, I've watched Goodfellas, damn it, plenty of damn times. They should have had this conversation face to face. Not saying that your car can't be wiretapped, but I'm just saying, okay? I'm telling you your whole life. Don't talk on the fucking phone, right? So anyways, once the feds heard that, they took it to 6ix9ine and said, look, these dudes are not your friends. They're looking to super violate you, bitch. You better read in between the lines. I think it means they're trying to kill you. And at that point, they told 6ix9ine that, you know what I'm saying, you need to cooperate with us. 6ix9ine was scared. He didn't want to cooperate with the feds. So the feds was like, well, fuck it. All y'all going to jail. So at that point, that is when 6ix9ine and everybody, you know, everybody that was involved with um, Treyway and all the people that you saw out there, you know, the folks in the music video and everything else, they were all arrested. So the charges pending against Mel Murder right now, he was supposed to be sentenced in July. I've been looking up information to see what he was sentenced to. I can't find anything. I've only been able to find the sentencing on another guy, but not him. But these were the charges that Mel Murder is looking at. So the Daily News is reporting Jamel Mel Murder Jones, 38, was the godfather of nine trade bloods, making him the highest ranking member on the streets, prosecutors said. Under the gang hierarchy, the nine trade bloods take orders from the prison lineup of bosses behind bars, according to the feds. Sporting a blue jail uniform, Jones admitted in Manhattan federal court to participating in the nine trade racketeering operations and acting as a courier of heroin and fentanyl on two occasions last year. Under the terms of a plea deal, prosecutors won't seek a sentence greater than 14 years. Jones was caught on a wiretap shortly before his arrest, saying that Takashi would face grave consequences from deciding to split from his nine tray entourage. Then they quote him as saying, he's trying to separate himself, Jones said November 17th, according to the prosecutors, adding that Takashi would be super violated, super duper. The threats led the FBI to offer protection to Takashi. When the Brooklyn rapper refused, the feds arrested him and nine other alleged gangsters, including Jones, for a wild summer of mayhem that included drug dealing, robberies, shootings. Last week, Takashi's former manager, Kafino Shadi Jordan, pled guilty for his role in the gang. Takashi is cooperating with the feds. Jones once rapped under the moniker Mel Matrix and was a member of Jim Jones' led group Bird Gang. All right, so you guys just heard me read that article. So, the, the, I mean, all this stuff is real. 
You know, um, this is not a TV show, even though, you know, sounds like one. Hell, it would make a great movie script if you ask me. But, you know, it, it's not. You know, these are these guys' real lives and their real families being affected. And, you know, of course, we can always say hindsight is twenty twenty. But, uh, you know, at some point in time, these were grown men who were so enamored with social media, you know, fame and, and, and validation and going viral that they didn't stop to think, who is this guy and why are we doing stuff on his behest? Because don't get it twisted, 6 9 was calling a lot of those shots. The shooting at the Berkeleys. He even talked about how he got these guys to go after Trippy Red. So he was calling a lot of shots. I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys this article. Now, as far as 6 9 and Trippy Red, this is what's being reported. As for Trippy Red, the 23 year old rapper admitted that he ordered an attack on him due to jealousy. He says, I told Shadi I wanted something done to Trippy, 6 9 said. Shadi said, say less, we'll get on top of it. We go to Red Hook or around the area, industrial area. I'm in a Jeep. We see Trippy Red Sprinter van. We surveillanced it, waiting for Trippy Red. Shadi said he had a few of his homies meeting up with us there. We stake it out. Trippy Red comes, gets in with 15 people. We follow him for an hour on the highway. I recall Harv coming to the four-door Honda. He continues, we don't want to get spotted. Shadi gets out, tells me to stay in the car. Harv parks parallel to the hotel. He's with like three other guys. Shadi comes back screaming, it's fucking Treyway. I love my niggas. We got that nigga. Shadi said Harv punched Trippy Red in the mouth. All right, so you guys just heard me read that. So he was sending these grown men out on missions for no other reason than, than jealousy. He admitted it. He was just jealous of Trippy Red. Why? I don't know. Because Trippy Red's music ain't that damn good. Okay? So he was jealous of Trippy Red. And instead of him making hot music and keeping it on wax, he was having these grown black men go out and fight his battles. Like, do you see how crazy this is when you really go deep into the transcripts and you really see, you know, the whole nuances of this situation? It's insane. Okay? Now, one black man who wasn't fooled by none of this damn rainbow skittled haired goodness, was Jay Prince, okay? Jay Prince stood 10 toes down and was like, ain't something ain't right about that little boy, okay? I'm not fucking with 6 9 and neither are my damn sons, okay? So Jay Prince is talking about the situation because, of course, um, 6 9 brought up his name during the testimony. So TMZ reached out to Jay Prince and he's speaking about the situation. He also posted on his social media. Y'all go ahead and check this out. It's hard. When a man, you know, is campaigning the way this this guy campaigns, you know what I mean? Eventually he's gonna get elected. So you can't <laughs> yeah, you can't have a man, you know, beside you uh with all that campaigning and you know, a bullet might fly from somewhere and hit the wrong person. So you wanna get an understanding with these kind of people before you allow them to sit in your car, stand beside you. So, you know, I understand I understood what they were saying. So Jay Prince played this video on his Instagram. Um, and then he then TMZ reached out to him. And he and they so TMZ is reporting this. The rap boss says he's been warning everyone for a while that if Takashi keeps campaigning with this dumb shit, that he's going to get elected. Election day has come, and now I'm hearing lies that he's telling under oath about robbing me or representatives of rap a lot. Jay Prince adds. If him or any of those clowns, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. Okay, sorry. If him or any of those clowns would have tried to rob me or anyone from the rap -a family, bad news would have beat them home. <laughs> I love J. Brent. He talks like such an old gangster <laughs> from like the 80s and shit. Any damn ways. Then they go on to say from Takashi's testimony. Takashi claims that he was denied entry into a Houston, into a Houston gig on March 2018 by rap -a -lot Peeps because he didn't check in and it cost him money. As revenge for the diss, the Nine Trays plan to rob Jay Prince's people a month later in New York. And Takashi says they pulled off an armed robbery on rap -a -lot reps in the lobby of the building. Jay Prince says that Takashi's version of events isn't how it went down, and the gig he got turned away from was his son's party because they simply didn't want him there. 
He says, let this be a lesson to those who know better to do better. There was never a question mark in my mind that this kid, Takashi 6 9 was rap material. That's why my sons didn't allow him to come into their party. It was never about a rat checking in with us. As far as the robbery, Takashi testifies that he was outside in a parked car while his former manager, Shadi, and other members did it. Surveillance footage of the incident was played in court. Law enforcement sources tell us that five perps approached two victims as they got out of the elevator, pointed guns at them, and threatened to kill them if they didn't get on the ground. They allegedly made off with two chains, a cell phone, and a bunch of hard drives. So once again, Takashi was sending these grown black men off to go do dirt for him. Whoever he had issues with, whoever he was beefing with, he was sending these guys off to go do that. And foolishly, these grown men were doing it. But this entire situation is just insane. Jim Jones hasn't said anything yet. People are trying to figure out if he's going to end up getting arrested. You know, even though he did call for him to be super violated, I haven't seen where anybody acted on that per se. So I don't know if they're going to come after Jim Jones, but all of this stuff just looks really, really bad. It's making hip hop just look crazy as hell. Now I understand why 50 Cent was like, when Takashi called him, you know what I'm saying? When he was going through all that shit, he refused to answer the phone. He was like, fuck that shit. You're hot, my dude. I'm not answering the phone. I'm not taking your phone calls. You know, so this entire situation is insane. But people need to realize that, you know what I'm saying, that street life is no joke. And there's only two ways when you're, when you're gang banging, you're out in these streets, the only options are death or prison. You know what I mean? And these guys, as grown as they were, they could have made legit money, did their thing, you know, stayed on the right track, but they let, you know, this social media error change them. These are supposed to be the OGs in the gang, and they're the ones acting like they're the newbies. And 6 9 is the one calling the shots, and the OGs are, like, running behind him and listening to what the hell he had to say. When it should be the OGs calling the shots on 6 9 like, I mean, this is some backwards shit. I ain't never seen nothing like this. So then it just, it, it makes me question, like, did you guys let him get away with this? Like, would you guys let a black rapper, you know what I'm saying, just come out of nowhere, join your gang and have him ordering you around? Or was it because he was of a different race and sometimes we tend to let our guards down when dealing with people of other races? And that's just me being all the way 100. Like, this, the, the whole way everybody was moving in this situation just makes no sense to me what's so damn ever. The only person who didn't play that was Jay Prince. He saw the fuck shit for what it was, and so did a lot of the people in the Mexican community. They seen he was a clown, and they didn't want to have nothing to do with him. That's why the real gangsters of the Mexican community did not want to associate with the 6 9 because people who are really out there doing dirt, people who are really out there involved in real criminal stuff, there's no way that you can be involved in that and then be on social media doing the things that he's doing. That's going to bring, you know, it's going to make your whole organization hot. I mean, that's just 101. Like, you know, that that's just common sense. So for these guys to think that he could gangbang, do dirt, and still be, you know, a, a celebrity and run his mouth on social media and film them doing robberies and doing dirt and there would be no consequences to this, to me, is just insane. So I just hope a lot of young people learn from this and realize that, once again, like I said in part, I don't know, part one or part two, go back and watch. It's okay to just be normal. It's okay to be boring. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to just work a nine to five. Because at the end of the day, I'd rather just work a nine to five or just do some regular, normal, boring shit and have my freedom than to be fighting, you know what I'm saying, for my life and to be fighting to stay out of prison behind some foolishness. I mean, like I said, these men are 38 years old and up and they're being sentenced to double digits. Shadi got 15 years. He would not be out until he's in his 50s. That's insane to me. That is insane. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Don't forget to thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Hit that notification bell so that way you can be a part of my notification squad. That's the only gang I represent is the damn tea sippers, okay? We just sip tea and have discussions. So that that's that's as far as our, our, our gang activities go. But um, yeah, this entire situation is sad. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's sad all the way around. Um, I'm sure there'll be a part five and a part six. Okay, I'm going to keep up with this for you guys. I'm going to continue breaking down everything for y'all. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All right. Deuces.